I was 10 at the time this happened. This event still gives me the creeps to this day. I had a friend come over for the night at my house. We ate some snacks, watched the movie on Netflix, and basically were having fun. After a few hours, we got bored and decided to do something different. My friend suggested that we should take two of my bikes and go explore the abandoned house nearby, for your understanding. If we would have walked there, we would have made it around one hour to the destination. If we would have taken the bikes, we would have made around 10 minutes. So we grabbed the bikes and rode till we reached the road to the house. We left our bikes at the entrance of the road. The house was on the left side of the road, heavily damaged, old and creepy. On the right side of the road, there was what looked like a garage full of what we thought were tools, no car. I agree with my friend that we should explore the house first, then a the garage. I already thought we should go back home. Right when my friend put his hand on the door, I heard a thud in the distance. It was like someone or something hit a metallic plate with a pipe or a big branch. I asked my friend, did you hear that? My friend said, hear what? I let it pass. I was thinking probably my brain was tricking me. Plus, I was a bit sleepy. The door to the house was old and creaky. I'll never forget the moment my brain processed the smell coming from the house. It smelled like rotten eggs, alcohol, and old unused meat. At this point, it was pitch black outside. We were using the flashlights from our phones to see in the dark. It was hard to see. My brain was making images that seemed real, but they were not. The atmosphere in the house was like an ancient place, but at the same time, it felt cursed. We saw a kitchen, living room, a bathroom with a purple mattress that covered the entrance of the room, and some stairs that were probably leading to the basement. Not even a candle was inside. The smell was coming from the kitchen, but also from upstairs. A hallway separated the living room and the kitchen. It was straight and as long as the ground floor. Firstly, we checked the living room because it was nearest us. It was almost connected to the kitchen. We pointed our flashlights at the floor and it was covered by a purple carpet with small black dots on it. There wasn't really anything special in the living room except for a lamp. It had a note on it that said, I'll be back soon. Prepare the sauce. With a smiley face at the end. The paper looked old, but the ink was fresh. Somehow, we didn't give it much attention. Big mistake. We went to the kitchen, opened the cupboards, and saw food. Bread, some salad, tomatoes, some kind of meat, what we thought to be steak, and it was bloody. The food seemed fresh, but the smell that got to us was mostly coming from the steak. We weren't that scared before, but the chills sneaked into us. I told my friend that we should return home, but he was a jackass and wanted to continue. Although I didn't want to explore anymore, I didn't have a problem with that, but two particular things made me want to go home. The idea of a crazy and dangerous homeless person that could have lived in there, in the basement. The walls from the start of the basement stairs were made out of concrete and nothing else. My friend was walking toward the basement. I grabbed him by his arm and told him I don't want to go down there. After one minute, I convinced him that we don't need to explore that part of the house and we moved on. Behind the purple mattress in the bathroom, there were clothes thrown everywhere. Pants, shirts, hoodies. But the weirdest thing was a bathtub. A mannequin with green dyed hair. I told my friend that we should get the fuck out of here. That's when we heard a scream from outside. A scream that was coming from a man. We both ran to a window to see what was going on. And what I saw marked me for life. Outside was a person with a clown mask that was dragging a dead body with him. He was heading for a garage. We both whispered to each other. What should we do? I don't know. I think there were two of them. The other one must be in the garage. As we were talking, the man in the clown mask turned on the lights in the garage. At that point, we could have died of fear. What we saw as tools were actually tools for dismantling a human body. The clown picked up the tool and began to scoop the man's parts out. I almost puked. We called the police thinking no one can hear us. They said to stay hidden until they arrived. We ran upstairs with no idea what was waiting for us there. Upstairs, there were four rooms. A bathroom and three bedrooms. We went into the first one that had a window. After minutes felt like hours, we heard the sirens of the police cars. I was so relieved when something happened. We heard a cracking voice saying, Come out, come out. I have many toys you can play with. After that, we heard the door opening. Not from our room, from one of the other three. 
My friend tried to open the window quietly, but after one small move, he gave up because it was creaky. At that moment, the guy was knocking on the door. We heard the police say, put your hands in the air. Then an officer kicked down the front door. At the same time, the guy from our door started to scratch the door with something sharp. Then he broke into the room. I had no choice but to try to jump through the old window, which I did. I couldn't feel the pain because of the fear. I landed in some bushes, then started to run towards the police cars. Then I heard someone running in the back. I looked, and it was the clown that dragged the body. He was faster than me. But the police officer saw him and shot him in his right hand. Then I saw the other clown walking out of the house, cuffed, and with another officer behind him. I was worried sick for my friend. Then my friend walked out of the house with another officer. I was so glad we didn't get harmed. The cuffed clown was sent to prison and got a life sentence for serial murders, selling illegal things, stealing goods from people and breaking into houses. And yes, the steak we saw was human flesh. I never visited any abandoned house since. This incident took place in my old house in the winter of 2013, me being 12 years old. My mom had gone on a vacation to visit her friend in Bakersfield, California, leaving us home alone. My sister Aurora, who's the oldest at 21, will be watching us, as well as my brother Austin, 19 back then. Austin and Aurora had come back from the local gas station to grab some snacks, hot dogs, hamburgers, slushies, candy, and chips and as well as Austin getting a pizza from Little Caesars as we were going to watch a football game that night. It was December 15th, 2013, when it was pitch blackout. The game being either the third or fourth quarter, even over the commentator and the loud sounds coming from the TV, we could hear a faint yet very slight scratching sound coming from the garage. It sounded like our cats were scratching the wood on the garage or maybe one of the dogs. Addison, my little sister, was looking around for the dogs and cats when she found them in the basement all resting in either our billet room or the two bedrooms we had down there. Addison came upstairs and told us, and we were pretty reasonably shaken. The scratching continued, and it only made us feel more unsettled. Austin and Aurora looked pretty shaken when we heard a loud collapsing sound in the garage. It sounded like someone climbed up the ladder to our storage area, went through all of our boxes, and shuffled them around. It was when it hit us. Bailey, my other sister, turned off the TV, while Allie, another one of my sisters, went to go turn off the lights. Addison hid in one of my basement bedrooms. Allie hid behind the china cabinet in our other basement bedroom. I was hiding under my bed. Aurora and Bailey were hiding behind my parents' bed. Then someone opened the door to our house and slammed it shut. It was a man. The man said in a gruff voice walking into the bedrooms, Aurora, Austin, Ali, Bailey, Elijah, Addison, I would like to give you some candy. He also said our full names at one point and somehow knew our middle names. The man started pounding on the three bedroom doors and screaming that he had a bunch of candy canes and he just wanted to spread the Christmas cheer. Austin jumped on the man from behind and he actually had a huge kitchen knife. Austin managed to stop him from stabbing or cutting him. The cops arrived a minute later and the man was still in Austin's possession. Austin had left him for maybe 20 seconds and when he went back in the hallway, the man was gone. We heard the front door shut and Austin never caught the guy. Unfortunately, however, the story doesn't even end yet. One day, when I was 15, I was walking home from school with Addison and Bailey. Aurora and Austin and Allie had all moved out by then. I opened the front door to see everything shifted around and the whole house was trashed. We found this incredibly odd and even more that it was a terrible foul smell coming from our basement and five of our dogs, Rocky, Roscoe, Petey, Coco, and Bingo, were all clawing at the basement door. I opened the door, since Rocky, Coco, and Bingo were all German Shepherds. They weren't scared as Petey and Roscoe were golden retrievers and they were petrified. Rocky went down first. He was acting very brave and then looked in the basement bedrooms and started barking. 
Our basement bedrooms are like this. One is off in the billet room, and there's a door at the back of the room, leading to another basement bedroom. One was our guest room slash office, and the other room was a storage room that was formerly our playroom, but Rocky was actually barking into our storage room. Bailey and Addison were upstairs cowering, while me and Rocky were downstairs in the storage room, scavenging around the room. I turn on the fan and the light. Then I hear, Elijah, come down here, please. I jumped and the man from that one night in December stood up with a knife. Rocky pinned the guy to the floor, biting him profusely. I screamed for Addison or Bailey to call the cops and they arrived in five minutes while Rocky was on top of the man. He was arrested and had been responsible for several crimes. I had forgotten about both incidents for a while and we actually moved out of that house a few days ago, which was June 11, 2020. And when we were actually looking at the house for a last look, Bailey looked at the wall behind the china cabinet in the guest room and screamed. There was old carved blood into the wall that said, I will come back. I will forever be grateful toward Rocky and Austin, both saving our lives. And Coco unfortunately died in August 2017 due to lymphoma. This incident will forever haunt me, and I hope we never see that man again. And I fear he will come to our new house, and he was sentenced to 12 years.